Hi everyone, I'm back with another quick video. Uh, this is a response to a question uh, by a viewer and it concerns why a modern bow has the center cut window while traditional bows don't. And to clarify what this question is referring to is why these traditional or historical bows are made with straight stave. So there is no uh, side cut out in the bow stave or the riser. It's basically a straight stick, whether it's a long bow like this one or a traditional Asiatic horse bow. Um, they're basically made to be ambidextrous. So there's no left or right hand. It's a straight grip. Uh, in comparison, the modern bows or traditional bows made in the post 1950s are made with a window or a center cut riser so that when you hold the bow there is a right hand or left hand and therefore you have to put the arrow on one particular side. So why does this difference exist? And why didn't historical bows feature that particular design element? The basic answer to this is precision. This bow design is inherently going to be more precise than this bow design. Now, this will bring up the archer's paradox and very often people misunderstand what it means. And just to clarify again, the archer's paradox is not the flexing of the arrow. You don't compensate for this flexing. That's a natural part of the shot. The arrow will oscillate. So if you are shooting a bow with no window or no center shot, you don't have to compensate some crazy degree where you have to aim way off because the arrow is pointing in the wrong direction. Now, if you do have to compensate, it's because the arrow isn't correctly spined. And spine is a big part of understanding Archer's Paradox. What happens is that when the arrow is pulled back, it must flex around the riser in order to not hit it on the way out. So when people designed arrows, the arrow must be flexible enough to accomplish that without colliding with the riser and therefore uh, losing its direction. In other words, if the arrow was too flexible or not flexible enough, it wouldn't fly straight from the bow and therefore it will deviate off target. This is a problem in modern archery as well, but modern archery has solutions. Historically, arrows were made from wood or bamboo, but mostly wood. The principle is the same. You need to find the right material of the right flexibility, the right length, the right thickness with the right uh, head in order to achieve the best possible flight from the bow. In most cases, it was good enough. Given that the purpose of these arrows is often for hunting or for war, and therefore you didn't have a lot of choice as to what the arrow could be made from, considering you need to have a certain kind of arrow point and a certain length to use your bow. Now, this wasn't a huge problem in uh, historical periods because as long as you could shoot accurately enough, then it was fine. As long as the arrow didn't come off the bow like a wobbly stick and flop to the ground, it was fine. As long as you can hit that target at 25 meters or hit that mass of soldiers at 200 meters, then it didn't really matter how precise you were. Uh, in fact, if you look at Asiatic archery, uh, many styles use khatra, uh, which is a technique which induces a motion or a turn in the bow wrist in order to allow a slightly better clearance for the arrow. So you could allow the arrow to fly straight without contacting the bow. Now this kind of bow design with a shaped grip and especially the window cut out for center shot happened in the 1950s and 60s. Now what's changed since then? Bows no longer used for military purposes, primarily used for recreation and target shooting. And what do you want in target shooting? The best possible precision. With the historical bows and historical shapes and materials, you can only achieve a certain amount of precision. Accuracy, yes, you could hit what you're aiming at, but precision means the tightness of your groupings and therefore more points. And this advent or this innovation allowed for a much easier experience in getting the right spine for your arrow. This design largely negates the archer's paradox. And again, just to be clear, the archer's paradox is not the flexing of the arrow, it's the offset of the arrow. This arrow is now in line with the bow, in the center line, more or less. So when it's drawn back, it stays in line. It doesn't deflect off to the side. That means that the arrow no longer needs to be as flexible to go around the bow. 
And because modern bows are generally lower in draw weight than the historical counterparts, it allows you to use a greater variety of arrows, since the arrows no longer have to flex as much around the bow. Uh, therefore, you can have more options for fine tuning. So for historical bows, because you need a particular draw weight or a kind of arrow or bow, then you were limited to what you could use. Basically, it was good enough but not optimized. With modern bows, modern materials, and modern manufacturing, you can fine tune the arrows and the bow much more easily. It's more forgiving. Um, an arrow like this can be made from aluminium or carbon, machine made, which means you can have a great variety of spines and therefore flex. So these options combined with the center cut shutout allow for greater customization and more optimal flight from the bow. The end result being that the optimal arrow from the right bow will be much more precise than a good enough arrow from a historical bow. So while the historical bows with arrows which were good enough achieved their purpose, a modern bow with the center cut window uh, and the right arrow will provide superior optimal performance, especially in regards to precision. And given the purpose of modern archery, which is mostly on recreation and scoring points, this is the preferred option over this. It doesn't mean you can't shoot accurately with this, but this kind of bow with the right arrows chosen should perform better on target than this. Given that the way you use these bows is identical, why didn't historical bows adopt that center shot? Main reason is simplicity of manufacture. Uh, historical bows were always handmade. It never progressed past the point of being an artisan craft. These were manufactured by hand. It took a long time to make compared to modern machine tools or machine or factory made bows. Given the high demand for archery historically, it would have been much more productive and economical to produce these single stays which are perfectly straight than to have the bowyer have to hand carve each one with a window. Without the demands of historical um, archery, you can make modern bows with better materials and better machining design. And of course, we're looking at the uh, epitome of precision shooting, which is Olympic archery, which are all universally made with the cutout window, um, especially now with the plunger buttons, which further cushion the uh, flexibility of the arrow. You're basically eliminating all deviation possible. Basically, the modern center shot window allows for greater forgiveness and flexibility, both in the selection of arrows and in your technique. Uh, this is further mitigated by the use of plunger buttons, which is used in uh, modern Olympic archery, which further cushions the arrow's flex and therefore guarantees a straighter flight for the maximum possible precision. And just to squash a likely myth that will come up, it doesn't take more skill to use a straight riser compared to a center shot riser. It's the same technique, same method, same skill. This is inherently going to be less forgiving than this. Anyway, I hope that sufficiently answers this question. Uh, I know some people uh, kind of mystify these straight risers because they were used historically by archers in the past. Well, these are like cheat or hacks. Um, they're really not. Uh, you know, modern bows are made for modern purposes. Historical bows were made to be effective for what they were needed for. Um, both require the same amount of skill. Both can be effective. In the end, use whatever works for you, uh, but that explains why there is that difference between these designs. Anyway, this is New Sensei, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.